Part two of this two-part series, this journey to obtaining your CCW. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. I'm Rick, and this... Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. <laughs> this is the shack. Hey everybody, welcome. This is part two of a two-part series in this exciting journey to obtain our CCW in Riverside County, California. At this point, as in the first video, you should be actively seeking a pistol, searching for ammunition, regardless in-store, online, or even an online auction option, having an FFL dealer ready when you make that purchase if you find one online for either a pistol or ammunition and you have your FFC firearm safety certificate you're all ready to go so when you hit that buy button you get it you're ready to get that paper done right then and there with no further delays in this section we're going to start off actively booking our classes from women's only introductory class to basic fundamentals of firearms to the CCW certification course and then actively starting our application with Riverside County Sheriff's Department and there's a whole lot in that there's some serious tips we do get very serious in this section so with that said let's just dig into it because this is fun and exciting gotta love America Depending on your experience, you need to start booking your classes. Little or no experience, don't have a pistol, again, continue to look, be diligent, you will find it. You may have to go to an auction site, pay a little more, but you can get it, just don't get taken too much. Go to the r2b.com website, that's Right to Bear Arms. I highly suggest, especially for the ladies, this is strictly for you, they have a ladies only, that is the ladies basic pistol class, it's $90. This is November 19th. I went online yesterday just to see the availability of classes. You have a class on a Saturday, which is good. Rare, they rarely have Saturdays, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Saturday, February 13th, and that is from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Short class is $90 for ladies only. Now, if you're a guy and you have little experience, I was talking to Alex and he highly suggested, yes, definitely go to the R2B Pistol Fundamental class. The uh, Pistol Fundamental class is a pre to the CCW and they go over some things there and mainly I suggest doing that is because if you've somehow picked up any bad habits they will see your strengths your weaknesses they will correct the weaknesses so if you're picking up bad habits they're going to correct those to so make sure you do things properly because safety is number one so the first one of these available again on a Wednesday January 27th so you have till the end of January so you got two months now for the first fundamental class precursor to the CCW class. Now, if you have experience and I talked to them, I called Alex before I signed up and said, you know, I don't know what's all required. And that's why I was asking, I don't know what all is required in the CCW. Do I need to take this fundamental class first? Because I wanted to make sure I would cover everything. I didn't miss anything prior to the CCW. That's just me. I want to make sure I do it and I do it right. I was going down there shooting prior to all this. I asked them, what are the qualification distances? I started practicing at those distances. And we were talking, he says, no, you actually do it pretty good. You don't need it. You can hop, skip, and jump straight to the CCW. So the first available CCW was in December. That is full. So the next available one, Wednesday, February 10th. And that is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That is a longer class. The reason being, Example, when I went through my class, I pretty much qualified right off the bat. I had three pistols I used. The gentleman next to me was off a little. They got everybody that passed out of the first. People who were maybe shooting off, have flyers. They will work with you to hopefully have you shoot more proficient so you can pass the class. And that's why they have it at 4 p.m. So they have time to work one-on-one -on -one with those individuals to get them to pass the class. And that's what it's all about. They will work with you and they will make sure you pass. Now a little side note, let's say you've done this and you still haven't acquired a firearm 
or maybe you just bid on one and you're going to win it. I talked to Alex, what happens if they book this and something happens and they're still not able to get it? Talk to them, you can still attend the class, but you won't get your certification until you acquire a firearm. So you can still do the class, hopefully get the firearm before your interview with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Call them, say, hey, I finally got my firearm, go down, they will certify you on that, and then they will give you your certificate. So don't worry, you can still do the class until you get a firearm, and then they take you and you can uh, do your three distances to qualify. If you pass, they will give you your certification, but you've already done the class, so don't worry about it. Still do it, and just hopefully within, I would say, 60 days. I, I give you two months. Hopefully you have a pistol by two months. I don't know how long they will hold that certification. You have to ask them. So those are the classes, and that is it on this. Saturday classes. That is a touchy subject because basically <laughs> there is none right now. The reason being that the ranges are so busy on the weekend right now, they just cannot sacrifice a section for a class all day. I talked with Alex, they are doing their best. They are working so hard right now to secure some place to have weekend classes. Right now they are booked up till March of next year. If they can find some place, secure it for a weekend class, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that may open up things sooner in January, February, instead of having to wait till March. But right now, there is none. Your only solution at present is, I don't know, it's been a wacky year, I don't know. If you have any personal time, any vacation time, if it hasn't been all used up already, maybe try to use one day, one month, one day, another month, and take a class during the week. To me, that's the only option right now, especially if there's nothing available on the weekends. Again, you can call around any other place, find out, but I am pretty certain that weekend classes are more than likely a little up there on price just because they are a premium. But that's why there's no Saturday classes as of yet. You cannot get in anywhere on the weekend because they are extremely busy right now. <sighs> Sad, but that's the way it is right now. So no Saturday classes, hang in there, hang tight. Do some calling other places, see what you can do. Otherwise, if you can, sacrifice one day a month and take a class during the week. That's it on this little bit of tidbit of information. I'm going to be a little bit serious here. USCCA. Personally, I think if you are on this path, you better damn well join USCCA because it is for your protection. Not only your personal protection, your possession protection. It is a cost. This is not a cheap avenue. This boulevard is money, money, money. It's like going on Rodeo Drive. It's all money. I joined USCCA two months before I even attended my class because I was going through all these scenarios. Doing a lot of research. Believe me, ask my wife. I was up very late every night watching videos, going through a whole lot of stuff. I have notes after notes after notes. So I wanted to know what was going on, what I should do. What if this scenario happened? What if that scenario, scenario happened? You know, I'm trying to get all the information I can. And I got very scared to the point where I was, I'm giving up. No way am I going to take this chance. But my wife wants me to have this for protection because the way things are. So I said, okay, I will continue. I joined USCCA two months prior. I paid $30 every month. I have the mindset that I am paying to retain a lawyer. I am paying to retain information that is beneficial to me. And USCCA is huge. I'm not saying the company, I'm saying their library of knowledge is huge. They have a lot. I think some of it needs to be updated. <laughs> a few years back, I think they need to start updating some of the stuff, but it is still there. And I watched a lot of it. I use it to practice. I learn from them dry firing and things of situational awareness. A lot of it I already knew because I'm kind of a people watcher and I, I, I sit around, I do things and I've always been in the mindset when I go to restaurants, I want to see what's coming in the door all the time. So I was going through all this stuff and what really scared me was not the fact that I had to pull my weapon in a defensive situation, it is the aftermath and that's what can destroy you.
If you don't know Too Young, Google it, O.J. Simpson. That is a perfect scenario. I believe that the family had every right to go after in a lawsuit. He was not defensive. He was not in a defensive situation where he was trying to defend himself or others from people coming after him armed and ready to do him bodily harm. I think people who are in that situation, there, sh there shouldn't be any backlash. We protected ourselves. More importantly, we protected our family or in public, we protected others. And then we are the bad guy? That's wrong. But then look at society. And this is where I have to watch myself. Certain people, I'll keep it civil, can riot. I am going to call it what it is. I don't care what the hell you say. They are rioting, destroying, burning. But they have every right. They have no ramification. They're not getting in trouble. They're just allowed to do it. So if that mob, I'm calling it for what it is, comes after me and I defend myself, again, Kenosha. We are defending ourselves and we are trying to defend others from hope, hopefully from not the same tragedy and we are the bad people. The problem is not that we defend ourselves, the problem is what comes after and that's what scared me and I will give you an example that we were given in class. The, we actually had a rep from USCC there. She came in and we were talking about this. Oh, I got questions for you. She gave us an example of something that just happened within like the last month or two. A gentleman in another state was awakened in the middle of the night, disturbance, heard something, grabs his firearm, goes out, finds a person in his house armed. Now there's one thing for being breaking in somebody's house is being stupid. But if you break into someone's house with a firearm, that's a whole nother level of stupidity. That means you're there for more than just taking something. You're there to go even do harm to the people that live there. I'm just saying, there's no need for a firearm if you just wanna grab stuff and run. So the homeowner sees this, isolates the threat, and then stops the threat. Does everything he's supposed to do, and there's something else. You dial 911, you better ask for the police and the ambulance because if you don't call for medical assistance, you're a bad guy. Regardless if you're just, your mind's going 3,000 miles an hour because you just did something that's just freaking you out because I don't know what I would do under a stressful situation like that. I've been in situations where I've seen accidents, people's legs are hanging off because their femur bone's sticking out, they're hanging there. I've helped them, I've seen where their skulls were split open, you see the skull there. You know, I did what I could do to assist people. That stuff doesn't bother me, I'm pretty calm, but if I have to pull something out to defend, I don't know how I'm gonna react. Nobody really does. So to say that I am thoughtless, that I, my intention was to let this person die, I'm heartless because I'm in the situation that I'm not technically trained like an officer for, that's wrong. That's just what happens under stress. We, you, know, you don't know what you're capable of, what you're gonna do, what you're gonna forget. So you better hope the hell you remember to call 911 and ask for an ambulance to have it on record so you're there, so you're not portrayed as this bad person. And then you shut up. Especially if you're out in the crowd or something, something happens, don't say anything to anybody. So the threat is stopped. You will be going downtown regardless. Be prepared. As soon as you get off the line, off of 911, hopefully you're in the state of mind, you can call USCCA. They have a number, you call them. Many cases, they'll have the lawyer waiting there for you by the time you get there because you are going to go downtown. <laughs> Not going to jail, you're going to go down there, they're going to detain you, they're going to go through all these questions and determine whether they should let you go or not. Again, Kenosha, if you're outside, you say nothing. You zip it, police arrive, you say, I will be more than glad to talk to you once my lawyer arrives and just leave it at that. Let them do their thing at the scene. Go downtown, lawyer's there, you go through him. They'll help you because you know your mind's going 3,000 miles an hour and you just, you don't know what to think, what to do. He's going to guide you. Their lawyers are like scholars. They are proficient in Second Amendment rights. They are hired specifically for that. I would not carry a concealed weapon without having USCCA to back me up, period. So everything's fine. You're good to go. You did everything you're supposed to do. They find no fault. You're let free. No. Now the scenario begins. 
This person that was stopped in this individual's house, he did everything in his right to protect him, more importantly, his family. And here's why I have to watch my mouth. I won't, I won't say names, let's just call her girlfriend. Girlfriend doesn't have perk to supply her with whatever she needs now. So she gets lawyered up. This is why lawyers get a bad name. So lawyer sues homeowner on behalf of girlfriend who doesn't have perk to supply her with whatever. And we won't go what we probably think they are. Instead of being responsible, go out and get a job, perk goes out and steals from everybody. More than likely she's probably on welfare. So she's still getting money, but she doesn't have the perks. Perks from the perk. <laughs> So they sue the homeowner for 80 grand. Oh yeah, big payday, big party. So I'm saying if you don't have USCCA, you're going to be screwed, basically. USCC not only has training information, everything you're going to need, they also have guidance and tips on lawyers on restructuring your finances. And this is what I got to work on now. I got to go through the expense of completely taking everything out of my name. I don't have anything company owns everything I will end up renting the house from the company or they will allow me to live here and I don't make any money I don't know how to work that yet but I will be paying for a lawyer I will be paying whatever it takes to restructure to do all this all the paperwork all the legalities not cheap but in the event of a situation and they think they're gonna come after me and I'm going to be this endless slot machine that pays out the wrong I don't own anything now that's why you need USCCA to protect yourself, protect your personal belongings, your investment, your 401k, your house. Because believe me, if they have any chance to do so, they will. You will be living on the street, taking a bus back and forth to work, and your paycheck goes to the loser for the next 20 years. Restructure, protect yourself, join USCCA. That, to me, is a must. No questions asked. It is a cost. They have different tier. See what best fits your budget by for now and maybe in down the road upgrade. I pay 30 every month. Platinum, I think it is. It's what everybody does. It's the most popular one. Don't want to scare you. Don't want you to stop and say, I'm not going to go through this. I want you to understand the severity of things that can happen and what some of the people out there are going to do if you ever have to defend yourself. It's all about injustice, not justice anymore. But those tides are changing. Be patient. Things are definitely in our favor. That's it on this tip. What I use when I go to the range, I use this. I use this to document every time I go. I document my time. I document the firearm that I'm using. Now I'm going to open this up. I'll put pictures on the screen. I'm going to show you what I mean. This isn't necessarily what this is used for, but it's what I use it for. So on the left, you see date location. I will write the date and I'll write either Magnum or Route 66. Weather, indoor, outdoor. And if it's indoor, I don't write condition. If it's outdoor, I'll write instead of wind, I'll just I'll write temperature if it's windy or whatever. They're just for my personal preference. Shooting. Now this is definitely where someone who is maybe reloading brass for your for, a, for like a precision shoot, they want to be very precise of what they're getting the results from. What I use it for is I will usually shoot two pistols per section here. So for example, maybe I took my Glock and my Beretta. On the right, I will use three targets for one, three targets for the other. But in the bullet, I will write full metal jacket, hollow point, whatever it is I'm shooting. The grain, let's say I'm just using full metal jacket, 9 mil, uh, 115 grain. Just so I know what I'm shooting because I do occasionally shoot maybe five rounds, no more than that, of hollow point or something just to run through the firearm because I want to make sure that there's not going to be any issues. Glock is great. It ha it's not biased to anything. It loves it all. It wants to shoot no matter what I got. <laughs> Smith & Wesson, I have some ammo I purchased. It was Russian made. On average, every 50 round box, I have five that won't cycle. They either jam or one or two that don't fire. And I got a dimple in the primer. I put the ones that haven't, that wouldn't cycle because I think they're maybe crimped or something. They got a little ring or maybe a little fat. 
Put them in the Glock, boom, Glock shoots it. Glock don't care, Glock loves everything. <laughs> but my Smith & Wesson, I found I can't shoot it. So now I know I don't shoot that ammo in the Smith & Wesson. So I make little notes on that. So that's why I said, this is why I do this for me. And of course, brass, they don't lie to shoot anything else down there. Distance, again, when I shoot, after I've just done some practicing, kind of warmed up, I will do like I did with qualifying. I'll do six rounds at the three qualifying distances. And I will log those on here. And I'll, in my notes, I'll say, you know, shot so many rounds with the addition of qualifying distances. Just so I know, I've shot more. Maybe I went through a whole round, a whole box of 50 with, with them, and I'm only shooting 10 rounds, then I'll do six rounds at distances. So I'm not getting a whole lot. Again, ammo's tight. I got to limit myself. I know I said earlier 25 rounds per pistol sometimes, or no, 16. Then I'll do six at the required distance just so I can log to make sure I'm still retaining my grouping. So on the right side, I will write on top there what the firearm is above the target, either Glock, Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Colt, and I will write the first one is 21 feet, second one is 30 feet, the third one is 45 feet. And that's what I use it for. If I ever had to pull my firearm in a defensive situation, they're going to come out to me and they're going to say, you don't know what you're doing. You're just some crazy whack job. You know, you're just out there wanting to shoot people up. I can grab this, show my lawyer. I have proof. I go to the range. How often I go. I even have a receipt I staple to the page that I'm there on. I'll show you that right there. Right there is a receipt and I have everything on it. This I went, uh, this was October 6th indoors. I just this one was strictly my bursa. I think I was there with my wife. I was training her, so I just shot a few rounds after she was done. The next page I have my Glock. This was the same day, and I shot four targets with that one. The next page I actually I did I did this. That's weird. I actually did different pages for each individual firearm. And this is my Smith and Wesson. And then this here is my Beretta. So I did each individual one. Normally I will split it. Three targets for one pistol, three targets for another. So I'll do two pistol per, save, save a little bit on the book. But that's what I do. So if they come at me, I'm saying, no, look it. There's my receipt, there's my proof. This is how often I go. You can't say I'm irresponsible. You can't say anything about me because I am going often. I continue my training and I have good groups. I am proficient at what I do. That's why I do that. That's my tip. It may be a little much to try to write it down and continue to do this every time you go to the rain, but I tell you what, if anything ever happened, God forbid, you got a very good backup right there. That's why I do that. I will have in the link below this one. Use whatever you want. I looked at many different books and I decided on this mainly because of the layout inside and I think that best fits my particular situation. I'm not reloading the ammo, not getting a specific load for maybe competition shoot, so I don't have that doesn't really re pertain to me, but I, it best fits what I want, and that's why I got it. That is that on this range tip. It's all about protecting yourself. At this point, you should be starting the application form with Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Once you book your class for the CCW certification, go online and I don't know where they are as far as their schedule is. If you're going through this and you started and you go on the website, let us know when you started, how far out are they are scheduling for. Now I don't know about Saturdays. Again, I know people work during the week. Maybe you only do a Saturday if that's the case. Probably booked pretty far out. Everybody's looking for the weekend schedule. I got through pretty quickly because I did everything during the week. If you're very time sensitive, you may have to sacrifice a couple days. With that, I'm going to go on to the Riverside County Sheriff's Department website. You're going to look at that. I'll dub it in. We're going to go through it real quickly. So let's get into it. So going to the Riverside County Sheriff's Department website, you'll scroll down to the bottom. You'll see where it says Concealed Weapons Permit, CCW. You click on that. That takes you to the web page. Now, if you just kind of scroll through the page a little bit, you scroll down and you're going to see where it says Pricing. I paid $122.75. It says the initial fee is $115. DOJ is $95. And I'll hit on that a little bit later about something. Share fee $20. And I don't know where everything else comes in, but maybe taxes. I don't know how that works, but again, you will be paying $122.75 and you'll see that later on. 
Now you go below that and you'll see issuance fee. Yes, that is an additional fee. Once you pass this, you have to pay $80 to receive that license. They took my picture. They charged me. I had mine within two days after my interview, and I'll tell you why. That's why I'm doing this, to try to save you time. This is not cheap. Everything adds up. So we scroll back up, and you go over to the left there, and you'll see Select to get started. We want new. So we're going to click on the new. And that's going to bring you to this page. Kind of read through it. Then down here, you're going to see where it says read the following before proceeding. There are six of these you go through. And I will say, please browse through them at least. This is all legality stuff, and it's very important for you to grasp a little bit of this because you are taking on a huge responsibility. So I suggest at least skim over it, try to read some of it. It is a little bit much, but if you have that type of mind, maybe you can absorb some of it. I read through it, it's like, oh, I'm getting a headache, but I tried because I am taking this very, very seriously. There are six of these. Please read the following before proceeding. You'll do that on six of these. So you click through, agree to six of them. Once you click on the sixth one, you go to this. Again, this is for your benefit. Read through it. This has to do with the new CCW application. Things you're going to need, which we'll go over in a little bit. Definitely, if you are military, uh, all your dis discharge forms, upload those. Uh, and we'll talk about the CCW Firearm Safety Course later. And again, if you're renewal, but that doesn't pertain to us. Click Agree, you go to the next one. Again, more, a little bit of information on the CCW. Read all that. Make sure you understand it. And the notice, read the notice of anything. And please, at least, read the notice. And I want to highlight right here, no badges or other unauthorized CCW accessories. I know I've gotten things either on Facebook or I don't know how it gets to me. I actually got some stuff to get a badge. It looks just like a police badge for a concealed carry. I'm thinking, I, that's wrong. You, you better not get something like this to try to flash it. Cause I'm telling you what, that'll go, to, go down as trying to impersonate an officer and you will have serious ramifications. So don't do it. That's why I'm telling you about this. Don't fall for any of that. Just delete it. They give you a license, that's all you are allowed to carry. And then we're going to go over there and we're going to agree to that also. Now, this is where you start the application process. General information, read through it, fill it out, everything you're going to need, self-explanatory. Uh, you are going to have to create a password. This is going to be an account that is going to be strictly for you. So that part there, fill that out. So when time comes and you have certain documents, you come back to your account and you upload. So make yourself an account and then you can continue the general information, all these normal stuff. Now we get to the employment status. This is where <laughs> I ran into a little bit of an issue. That little retirement, I clicked on that. When I went to my interview, because of the wording in my just cause why I wanted the CCW it had to do partly with the business. So when I went to the interview, he looked at me and says, you're retired? I said, yeah, technically. And he kind of looked at me and goes, do you have any dealings with the money, banking, transporting, tools, anything of that nature? Are you still doing anything like that? And I said, yeah. He goes, you're retired? Okay, like, yeah, I just kind of work when I want. You're retired. I'm thinking, why do you keep asking me this? I said, yeah. He goes, you're still actively handling some of the account. You're still actively doing some of the work. You're still, you, and you know, basically kind of go over and goes, you're retired. And some, you know, my brain is just dusty and there's a little bit out there and it's squeaky. It finally kicked in. I found my gear. I'm like, click. Um, oh, okay. I understand what you're saying. No. So I, technically can't say retired if part of my reasoning is because of the business. Even though I am technically retired, I work when I want, pick and choose what I want, when I want money, and it's still under the business name, so I'm not retired in their eyes. So I had to change that. So be very truthful, be open, 
You have to be transparent in this. Don't hide anything because if you do hide anything, that will either delay or even possibly deny you the CCW. Because if you're going to try to hide, sneak around, not tell the truth, then that's going to look on your character. They're not going to be able to trust you and that's going to weigh heavily because if they can't trust you, then they can't trust you with a firearm. Simple, easy process. Don't lie. Don't hide nothing. Be very honest bluntly honest if you have to back to the application again so make sure if you are self-employed unemployed or you actually are retired <laughs> be honest next thing you do if you have any yet if you have a firearm you're going to go through the class and get qualified with this is where you fill that information out make model caliber serial number um, you're allowed up to six. I have three on mine right now. If you don't have it, that's fine. If you get qualified with the firearm prior to your interview, all you have to take with you to the interview is that information right there. Now, the next thing you're going to go through is the file upload. What you're going to need, and it says basically stuff right there, copy of your valid California driver's license, copy of two most recent utility bills. I did water bill and electric bill. Um, copy your birth certificate. Again, military, you upload discharge forms. Um, once you qualify in your CCW qualification class, they give you a certificate. You upload that certificate. And also, if you are self-employed and you're doing it because of a business like I did, you're going to have to upload either the business license, DBA, or whatever form you have for running your business. Now you go down there, once you get that all uploaded, again, you don't need it all at once. You can go back and upload it as you get it. After that, we scroll down a little further and this is where we select your application type. You will hit the first one. That is a new standard to your license. You scroll over here to your right and then it's gonna be your cost and right there it is. Oh, okay, convenience fee, that's why. So it's 115, then you got the convenience fee of four dollars and you got your processing fee of 375 which makes it 122.75 that's why so that's your total fee what you're going to pay for now once you click on that that's your fee scroll down to the bottom so you can complete this section you're going to put in your initials and if you ha doing this on a tablet maybe you can probably use your finger or pen and write in a nice um, a signature I was doing it on my PC, so I was using a mouse, and it looked like, oh my God, it took, I literally took me 20 minutes to try to figure out how to do this, as, and I'm showing you right now. It is very difficult for me to use a mouse to try to do my name. It's like, this is almost impossible. It's terrible. So I just did my best, clicked, went to the next page. Now the next page, I'm not going to go there because I'm not going to fill out all the aliases, all the stuff just to get to that page. You go to the next page, that's where you're going to fill out more information. They're going to ask you about if you've ever been denied this, denied that, done anything, do this. That's where you better not lie about anything because they will find out. Also, I think, I don't remember, I think by when you get to that point and you go through all the stuff, then you're going to pick your date your date of interview so again if somebody's going through this right now let us know please it would help others just let us know you went on the site let's say in December and their first appointment open for midweek was like in January or maybe the first available Saturday was February or something you know, just let us know something because I have no idea and that would definitely be a help to others trying to go through this process so basically that's it through this now again I have two tips after this they have to do with the application form and one is concerning the other document that I did not talk about yet and that is your live scan form we are done with this part <laughs> This tip has to do with your CCW application form with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. You're going to have to show just cause. So what are you going to come up with? I'll tell you right now, quick side note, do not say anything about Second Amendment right. They don't care. Not meaning them, meaning California doesn't care. 
They don't want you to even have a firearm. Why do you think they have such restrictions in this crap-filled street of Commie, California? They don't want you to have any rights. They don't want you to have any freedoms. So don't say anything about the Second Amendment right. They don't care. Not the officers. That's what they have to do as far as guidelines with California. So don't take it out on the police. I'm going to give you the scenario of my just cause. I don't know how many years back now, four years, something like that, when California decided they let, let all these losers grow marijuana now. We had a house, one of the first houses coming down dirt road. One house started growing, and then another, and then one, not my neighbor, next one over, was growing. I watched that person personally leave the house multiple times a day, went up working on my house, multiple times a day leaving and coming back and I know what he was doing. He was selling drugs, going down and meeting somebody doing a deal. That's not growing for legal purposes. That's not growing, what do they call them, dispensaries. No, that's growing it to sell illegally and that's the problem when I have with it. They're not doing it legal. They don't care. Free market, they do whatever the hell they want. Again, entitled little shits do whatever they want. And I gave an example of what did happen, unfortunately, and it's a tragedy. All these houses around growing, we had a tragedy happen within a year of all this starting. Coming home, this was all blocked off. I couldn't get home. Like, what the heck's going on? 10,000 police, man. I think the whole force was here. <laughs> Come to find out, a child got a hold of a gun because, of course, Drug dealers, they're, they're honest people and they abide by the law and they 100% abide by buying their guns, waiting 10 days, having a safe place to start, all that. You know, they're, they're law-abiding people. Tragedy kills himself. Playing with the gun. How they got a hold of it? <laughs> yeah, because he didn't have it stored properly, of course. He's not law-abiding. Being sarcastic. So all this happened, this guy's going down the road multiple times dr doing drug deals, and I feared for my life now. Wrong place, wrong time. How am I going to defend myself? I'm just going home. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. You're trying here to do this. No, you, you know, you're, you're with another gang or something. You know, just the stupid stuff that happens. Not to mention the fact that I, through my business, I have tools. And in many cases, I'll have cash. I feared for my life. I have tools, cash on hand, plus the vehicle. That was my just cause. Perseverance of life. I'm going to leave you with that. I had a paragraph probably that long. The gentleman at the CCW unit compressed it down to about four sentences and it was perfect. Got everything I was thinking compressed down to exactly what it was. They're there to help you. They're, to, they're there not to screw you around. They were joking around, laughing. It was a fantastic time sitting there so don't go in there scared because I was scared I'd never been through this like what are they gonna look for they're gonna put me in the chair put the light on me gonna drill me you know I had no idea what to expect it's cool very laid back these guys are great they're joking they have a good time they are enjoying themselves hopefully you can enjoy this too it is a fantastic experience just have a decent just cause don't say anything about the Second Amendment right and you should be fine because they are there to help you. That is it for this tip, for your just cause for your CCW application. First tip I have in regards to the CCW application form. When you go there, wear something nice because when you go to the interview, if everything's fine, they are going to take a picture. Because the picture they take there will end up being, if you qualify, will be the picture on your CCW license. That's the easy tip. Wear something nice. <laughs> That's it on this. This tip has to do with the CCW application form. Part of the documents you need, you're going to have to have a live scan, your fingerprints. When I went through the class, a couple of people were saying they went to these third-party places, was that UPS stores, mailboxes, or whatever they are, you know, places like that, then go get their fingerprints done. So I figured, you know what, I got three weeks after my CCW class with my interview. I better get on the ball then because I need that before I go in there, I'm thinking, I don't know. So I called up a place, found 
someone that was had an open in the next day, drove down there, I'm waiting, he calls me in, and he asks for my paperwork. And I look at him like a deer and it's staring in the headlights and thinking, what paperwork? I'm getting a live scan done, don't you have the paperwork? No, you have to get that through the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Okay, <laughs> whatever. So I got home, I got on the, on the computer, I emailed the CCW unit, got an email back. What they told me was I had a PDF file that had everything I needed. There was the form for the live scan and some documentation and I don't know if I have it if I can I don't know if I can even link it in the description but if not contact the CCW unit and ask for information in regards to the live scan. They will send you this PDF file. They'll have the form to fill out in there and they will have a list of places to get it done. You read that form, it will tell you big bold letters, do not, and I repeat, do not use any other vendor other than the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Good reason, and I'm gonna tell you why. This will save you time, hopefully. If you go to another site, they're gonna charge you 30 to $50. You go to the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, it's going to cost you $10. And I will tell you right now, they say cash. No credit, no charge, I don't think check, cash. Scrounge up some quarters, scrounge up a few dollar bills, a couple fives, take $10 cash with you when you go. The reason why you don't want to use anybody other than the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, not to mention that it is cheaper, but think about it, chain of command. Even at a crime scene, you have a chain of command. The less handlers, less people involved, less chance of contamination and loss. Loss. There have been numerous times people have done that. They've lost the files, delayed them, came in, blur something, didn't read properly, they didn't do it right, delayed them. And in one instance, someone said that they actually charged them for their FBI background, and that was, she goes, I don't understand that because in the stuff we looked at on the website, right there it says $95, but she told me it was 98, so again, things may have changed. She told me $98 of that fee went to the government for the FBI background. So these administrative fees, 98 bucks went to the FBI for your background check. Yes, you will have an FBI number now. My wife does home-based business. She does background investigations. She ran my name and she goes, oh my gosh, you're in the FBI now. I say, yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that, but it is what it is. So other than paying three or four times more than you should pay the fingerprint, he paid an additional fee, which he shouldn't have paid. So you go through the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, you pay the $122.75, you pay $10, and you're done. Until you get the license, then it's another $80. But you shouldn't pay any more than that. You go to these other sites, they're going to charge you again, $30 to $50, not cheap, it's a waste, don't go there. Call up one of the places on the list, I called three, I ended up going to the one in Hemet, California, went to that place, went in there, she did my fingerprints, we were going to the next hand, and she goes, uh oh, she was doing some stuff, she goes, yeah, that one didn't read right, so we had to go back and do my other hand again, because the print didn't come out proper or something. Again. Good thing because what if I went somewhere else, they sent it off, they came in, oh we can't read that, we gotta do it again. I just laid my CCW. Now the kind of second part of this tip, when you book your class for the CCW certification and you get your interview from the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, if you have a minimum of three week gap there, I strongly suggest you get on the ball and get your fingerprints done ASAP. And I'm saying with, I would go no less than two weeks. I would rather go three weeks prior to my interview. Why? Because time. When I went to my live scan, it was nine days before my interview. I got to my interview. He was going through the stuff and he goes, oh, oh, you've already had your live scan. I said, oh, yeah. He spun around. He's going through this paper. Hmm. Spins back around and says, if you don't hear nothing from me tonight, contact me in 48 hours. This was Tuesday, like at 1 o'clock. Nothing Wednesday, didn't hear nothing. 
Thursday morning, got on the computer, emailed them. I haven't heard nothing. You said check in. By, I think, 11.30 that, that afternoon, email me back. Your CCW is here waiting because I did not delay my, my live scan. If you go to that interview, then you get your live scan. You just delayed yourself another two weeks minimum. That's why I'm saying once you book your class, start setting your interview date for your interview, depending on how far out. Again, maybe you can get it. I got mine in three weeks, so at least three weeks. Immediately try to get your fingerprints done so that is already there because I guarantee you if I was... If I had that done the week prior and I had maybe 10, 11 days, it probably would have been there. And he probably would have spun around and said, I got it right here. Do, 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 ding. Wait a few minutes, process my photo. Here's your CCW. I could have had it that very day. That's why I'm doing this to try to save you time. No more delays. Get it done, ready to go. So it's already there. And all they have to do is make their final decision. That's the last tip that I have. A lot of information I know, a little bit long, but I divided it into categories. Hopefully you can navigate through that and find out information if you had a question I did not answer. Please hit the comment section. I'll do my best to answer that. This is exciting, it's fun. I only recommended the things that I recommended because I went through it and I enjoyed it. The people were great. Riverside County Sheriff's Department is fantastic. It is a very welcoming, relaxed, laid back atmosphere there during your interview. Nothing that I thought it would be like, so it's great. I truly encourage you to do it, but understand that my main thing it is a complete different mindset and there are responsibilities you have to be aware of that's why i had to be a little bit more serious this section it's a lot but this is a huge responsibility and you need to understand ramifications if god forbid you ever have to pull that in a defensive situation thank you so much for watching be blessed take back your shack build it for your sanity I know this has nothing to do with woodworking, but that's, that's the way I do things here. Defend America. Support America. God bless America. I love this country. I will not let anybody take it away from us. We will fight till the end. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next video.